In this problem, we're going to show that two sets are equal to each other. The sets that we're working with are the sets A union B intersect C, and the other set is A union B intersected with A union C. Often when we want to show that two sets are equal to each other, what we do is show that each set is a subset of the other. So if we want to use that strategy in this problem, what we need to do is two things. We need to show that A union B intersect C is a subset of this right-hand set, and we need to show that this right-hand set is a subset of the left-hand set. If we can establish these two things, that means that every element in the left set is also in the right set, and every element in the right set is also in the left set. So if that's the case, then these sets have to be equal since they all have the same things in them. So let's work, work on these one at a time. So to show the first one, what we're going to do is we're going to let x be an arbitrary element of our left-hand set, the set A union B intersect C. So if x is actually in this set, there's you know, two ways that this can occur. It can occur because x is in A, or it could occur because x is in B intersect C. Because I'm unioning two things, it could be in one of them or the other, or actually both. But we won't worry about the both case right now because the implications will be the same. So let's think about this first case. Let's say that x is in A union B intersect C, and specifically we know that it's in the set A. Well, if x is in the set A, then x is obviously in the set A union B, because if I union something with it, I just add on more things, so I'm also in A union B. Similarly, if x is in the set A, it must also be in the set A union C, because again, if I'm in A and I union C with it, I just add on more, more things, so I'm, I'm definitely going to be in the set A union C. So when x is in A, it's in the set A union B, it's also in A union C, so if it's in both these things, it has to be in the intersection. So x is in A union B intersect A union C. And this is actually the form of that right-hand set, right? So when x is in the set A union B intersect C, if it's in A, we can conclude that it's also in the set A union B intersect A union C. What about the other option? It could be that X is in the set A union B intersect C, but it's not in A. It could be in the second part. It could be in B intersect C. Let's think about that for a minute. This means that X is in B and it's in C, because that's what an intersection means. It's in both of these pieces. So this means that X has to be in A union B, because if, if since X has to be in B, if I union A, I am still in this set. Similarly, since X has to be in C, it must also be in the set A union C. So since it's in both these things, again, it's in the intersection of these two things. So in either of these cases, I end up with X also being a set of, or also a member of the set A union B intersect A union C. So in either case, X ends up in this set. So what we've done is we've established that the set A union B intersect C is a subset of the set A union B intersect A union C because I let X be an arbitrary element of the left-hand set and I showed no matter what, it will also be an element of the right-hand set. And that's what the definition of a subset is. Okay, let's work on two now. We need to go the other way. So let's let X be an arbitrary element of this set, A union B intersect A union C. And our strategy is going to be to show that it must end up in A union B intersect C. And the way I did this, is a, it's a little tedious here, and there's different ways to do this. We'll actually work this in a different way in the next video, but for this way, I kind of did kind of a tabulation. And I said, let's think about all the different ways X can be in the set A union B intersect A union C. There's only so many ways this can happen, and if we can just enumerate all of them and figure out what the, the implications are, then we can cover all our bases and, and know the answers. So the first case is kind of the degenerate case. We're going to assume that X is in this our set, A union B intersect A union C. But let's go ahead and assume that X is not in A or B or C. That's what I mean by these red X's. Well, if X isn't in A or B or C, it's not in the set A union B. And it's not in the set A union C, so it's not in either of these, so it's not going to be in the intersection of these. 
Okay, so if X is actually in A union B intersect A union C, it's not possible that it's not in A or B or C. Okay, so this is kind of a case we don't need to consider. This can never happen based on our assumption of X being in A union B intersect A union C. Okay, what about this next case? Again, let's choose X not in A or B, but let's put a green check mark to indicate that X could be in the set C. So it's not in A, it's not in B, but it is in C. So again, if it's not in A or B, it's not going to be in the set A union B. If it's, since it's in the set C, it will be in the set A union C, so I put a green check mark there. But since it's in not both of the sets, A union B and A union C, it's not going to be in the intersection. So again, I would not have the intersection A union B intersect A union C be a valid choice. So, so case two kind of fails as well. If X is really in the set A union B intersect A union C, it's not possible for it not to be in A and not to be in B, but B and C. Okay, let's get to another interesting case here. Case three. So what if I have the case where it's only in B? Well, then it would be in A union B, but it wouldn't be in A union C. It's not in both of those, so it's not in our total set. Case four. What if it's in B and C? So now we get to something a little interesting. Since it's in set B, it will be in the set A union B. Since it's in set C, it will be in the set A union C. Since it's in both of these sets, it's also in the intersection. So we're finally to a case that's kind of legitimate for our starting assumption of X being in the set A union B intersect A union C. So we see that one possibility is that X is in both B and C, but not A. So that's, that's a good option. If we keep going, here's our next set. Since it's in A, it's in A union B. Since it's in A, it's in A union C. Since it's in both A union B and A union C, it's in their intersection. So case five is also a legitimate choice. It could be that since X is in A union B intersect A union C, it's the case that it's just in A. So that's a legitimate choice. And we're going to have the same thing for cases six, seven, and eight. Okay, so now we've, we've enumerated all the possible ways that X can be in the set A union B intersect A union C. And those cases are cases 4 through 8. Cases 1 through 3 don't make any sense. So let's look at these. For cases 1 through 3, like I said, these are not possible. So these are the cases that don't meet our starting assumption. What about case 4? In case 4, X is in B and it's in C. So it's in B intersect C. Well, this implies that it's in the set B intersect C union with A, because I can always union something and still be in there. And this is the set we wanted to be in, right? What about cases 5 through 8? Well, in cases 5 through 8, X is always in A for all of those cases. Since X is in A, X is definitely going to be in A union B intersect C. I can always union on and not reduce anything. So in either of these cases... For, for all And for all X in my starting assumption here, I've shown that X is going to be in the, quote, left-hand set, so to speak. So what we've shown here is that for all X in my starting assumption, A union B intersect A union C, I end up with an X in A union B intersect C. That means that this is a subset of A union B intersect C. So if I combine these two results, in step one we showed this was a subset of this. In step two we showed that this was a subset of this. So that implies that these two sets are equal. And again, this is kind of a, a long way to work this, especially step two. We'll do it slightly different in the second way. But it was a very direct way of showing that these two sets were equal by just kind of enumerating our options.